Startling new numbers to show you how dire the crisis is at the southern border. Nearly 7,000 migrant encounters a day for the past three months. This is the fate of Title 42 policy protections remain uncertain. Some in Congress are now pleading with the White House to step up. Texas Representative Tony Gonzalez joins us now. Um, there are a record high number of migrant encounters. You wouldn't know it if you ever listened to a news conference coming out of the White House, but they have been reported at the border since the start of fiscal year 2023. That's October 1st. Um, as of Thursday, 600,000, over 600,000 total migrant encounters at the border. A new record for the months of October, November, and December. Over 186,000 were expelled under Title 42, leaving the majority of over 430,000 released. There's the problem. Title 42 is still in place, right? But this administration has not utilized it the way it was intended under the Trump administration when it actually worked. Why is that? Uh, good morning, Julie. Yeah, the, 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 the reality is this is exactly what the administration wants. What we're seeing unfold is their plan. Uh, one of the things that we have to do, uh, we as Republicans, as just Americans, is, is to push the administration to go, this is not normal. What is happening at the border is not normal, nor should it be normal. It's as if the administration wants everyone to think that this is a, a typical thing that occurs. No, it's a dead of winter, and you've got record numbers of people coming over. There is nothing normal about what's happening at the southern border, nothing normal about the number of terrorists, uh, potential terrorists coming over, fentanyl, uh, and you know the, the, the list goes on and on. Uh, as Republicans, we have to push back and let them know that th things have to change, and it starts with border security. Let's talk about the gotaways. In the past 90 days, uh, CBP observed over 240,000 gotaways. That's an average of roughly 2,600 per day. Uh, Congressman Henry Cuellar, a Democrat from Texas, a Democrat from Texas, I'm going to say it twice, takes a swipe at progressive White House staffers for blocking efforts to handle the border crisis. Watch this. The administration just can't say, Congress do the immigration reform, they have the power to do policy right now, but they just, you know, quite honestly, I think the uh, Homeland Security Department is struggling with some of the more progressive White House staffers, and I hope Homeland wins this particular fight. I can't understand why progressive White House staffers would have any say on what is honestly one of the largest uh, humanitarian crises in this country. That and the number of fentanyl deaths, which I could talk about every single day, hoping that the White House would somehow respond, and they simply do not. And they're worried about politics and progressives when people are dying? Yeah, Congressman Cuellar, uh, like myself, has a district along the border. And what is happening is essentially him and I are, are contacting uh, Customs and Border Patrol uh, literally daily and, 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 and trying to work uh, directly with the source to get some of these holes filled. It really shouldn't be that way. The administration should be doing its job, which they're not. But I, I'll remind everyone, you know, it's it's time for Congress to lead. House Republicans now now will have the majority, and we got to stop just uh, bringing to light all these issues. That's important, but we got to start fixing them. And, and you know, uh, the power of the purse resides in the House. So there's opportunities for House Republicans to start by uh, by funding border security. One of those measures is uh, is Operation Stone Garden funds. These are funds that go directly to uh, sheriffs and law enforcement officers along the border that are doing a lot of the heavy lifting. That account hasn't been in increase during this Biden administration. There's others too, uh, like the wall and, and some other things that make sense, but it's time for House Republicans to lead and through the appropriations process is I believe the best way to do it. Title 42 was potentially going to expire this week, so it was extended. And then when President Biden was asked about it, he just nonchalantly was like, eh, I mean, this is literally his response. I'm paraphrasing, but oh yeah, I guess they've extended it till I guess June. So I, I suppose we've got some time to figure things out. They're not trying to figure anything out. That's the problem. I mean, what is being done right now? The president is on vacation in, in the Caribbean. Uh, Congress hasn't made any decisions. So who's the backbone of the root of the problem? Because it ain't Kamala Harris. Yeah, one of the one of the issues is uh, it's, it's this administration is a sleight of hand. They want you to be looking at one side while they're you know with their right hand stealing everything out of the cookie jar. W one of the things that they've done is the, when these policies get overturned by the courts, is they don't enforce them. So one of the things that, that a new majority in the Congress needs to do is to ensure that Title 42 and other policies 
are being enforced. There's nothing more dangerous to this country than catch and release. When someone comes over and they just get released in our country with no uh, re repercussions, it only encourages more. Over 100, I've hosted over 100 members of Congress uh, yeah. that have come down and see it. You've got many new members like Zach Nunn from Iowa and, and uh, right. Derek Van Orden from Wisconsin. Juan Siscomani in Arizona. These are new members that are already up to speed on the border. Right. On day one, you're going to see House Republicans really push to secure this right. border, starting with the appropriations process. We look forward to it. Congressman uh, Tony Gonzalez, thank you very much for coming on. Happy New Year. Thank you, Julie. Rich. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.